In this video, we're going to go over chemical equations like this thing here and the main types of questions that they'll ask about these. Now, one question is, what are the products in this chemical equation? But don't blink, you'll miss it. Products are just the things on the right side of the equation. So let's highlight those. And that's it. That's the final answer. Things on the right side are the products here. But they could ask you, what are the reactants? Those are all of the things on the left side. Okay, but how do you keep these straight? Well, usually they give it away by describing it. During photosynthesis, carbon dioxide and water react. Let's pause there. Let's highlight those. The first thing is carbon dioxide. This guy's water. Notice they react or combine together. That's why they're called reactants. So the same word shows up right there. But then they produce glucose and oxygen. Let's highlight those. So the things that are produced, that's why they're called the products there. Glucose and oxygen. So by looking for these words, that can remind us which is the left and which is the right side there. Okay, let's keep going. What is the correct chemical equation for this combustion? Well, everything that combines together is going to be on the left, the things that are produced on the right. So let's see how they describe it. Butane, this thing here, is used in lighters and portable stoves. Carbon dioxide, this guy here, and water, this thing, are created when butane reacts with oxygen. But let's highlight this part. We know the things that react, those are the reactants, they're going to go on the left side. They say that butane, let's go ahead and highlight that here. This thing reacts with this thing here, oxygen. In other words, both of these need to be on the left side since they're reactants. But given the answer choices, only the first one has that correct. So automatically, A, we know these react or combine together. They belong on the left side. But let's just verify, because carbon dioxide, 8CO2, that's going to be on the right side, and water, 10H2O, because those things are created. Same thing as produced at the end of the equation here. So those things belong on the right side, and that's all correct there. For this one, which of the following statements is true? Let's read it. When the metal sodium combines with toxic chlorine gas, it creates harmless table salt, or sodium chloride. That's crazy. The balanced equation is this thing here. But again, let's just go ahead and read it in order. Identify what everything stands for. They say that sodium combines with chlorine gas. So the first thing is sodium. The second thing, chlorine gas. Those combine together. But then it creates salt or sodium chloride. That's the thing at the end. Okay, let's keep going. Which is true? One unit of sodium is consumed. Let's pause here, because what do they mean by unit? Well, the unit is always the number in front. Again, sodium, they said it first, so that is the first thing here. But there's actually two units, because that's the number in front. It's not one unit. So the first one, that's not true. However, two units of salt are produced, because the thing at the end is salt, and it's got the number two in front, so that is two units there. Okay, but let's keep looking. Two units of sodium are consumed. Let's see if this is correct. Well, that's two units sodium, that matches. But then they say only one unit of salt is produced, so that's no good. Alrighty, so it's not B, but let's look at C. One unit of chlorine is consumed. Now chlorine, that's Cl2 here. What if there's not a number in front? If there's not, it's always a one. So there is one unit of chlorine here. And two units of salt are produced. We know that is true. So C, this is the correct option for this one here. So just take your time, find out how many units of everything, and you'll be good there. You may be asked to balance a chemical equation. Which coefficients will balance the left side of this chemical equation? Well, what about coefficients? What are those? That actually is just the number in front of each of these guys here. 
Same thing as the number of units. So notice that all the answers have different units or different coefficients for the left side here. But the place you're going to start is on the right side. This is going to tell us how many total atoms we have here. So let's see. We've got two Al. Let's go ahead and highlight that. That means we have two aluminum atoms on the right. We need two aluminum atoms on the left. So what number do we want? Well, we need a two right there. Therefore, two of these guys, two of these guys, it's balanced so far. But only B and C have those. Let's get rid of A and D so far. And then let's keep going. We'll go to the right. How many Cl atoms do we have? That's chlorine. Well, when you have a little number, you're always going to multiply it with the big number in front. So 2 times 3, we've got 6 chlorine on the right side. Therefore, we want 6 on the left. What number do we need to put here? Well, this has to be a 3, because 3 times 2, that'll give us 6 on the left. And like we said, 2 times 3, we've got 6 on the right. So 3Cl2, that's what we're looking for to balance the equation. So B, this has all of the right coefficients here. Like we said, start on the right side, count your totals, and then work backwards to see what coefficients you need there. Let's try another one. Feel free to pause and practice this one on your own here. Which coefficients will balance the left side of this equation here? Well, again, we're going to start on the right side. Let's find our total. And we're going to multiply. This time we have Fe. That stands for iron. You don't need to know that, but just FYI. We've got the little 2 times the big 2, so we have 4 iron on the right side. We need 4 on the left. Therefore, we need a coefficient of 4 to make that happen. Okay, got 4 iron there, 4 iron here, so that would keep it balanced. Which options do that? A and D. Next, how many oxygens do we need? Well, we've got 2 times the little 3. Six oxygens on the right, we need six on the left. Therefore, we want a coefficient of three. Three times two, we get six there. We knew we had six here. So this is the final answer that'll balance the left side. So four, but then three for the second one. So D, this is going to correctly balance the left side of the equation. Make sure you have the same number of atoms on the left and on the right. And the reason is, atoms can't just be created or destroyed out of nowhere. They're like little Lego blocks. You can rearrange them, connect them in different ways, but they don't just vanish or disappear. But what if they give you a little bit of a harder one? Let's check it out. We're balancing the left side. We'll count up the right side, and let's do it. We've got three Cs. That's three carbon atoms. Let's put that. We want three Cs on the left side. But this means the same thing. It's three carbons. They're all connected together like Legos. These would be three Legos not connected. But either way, it's still three and three. So it's balanced, and that's fine so far. Let's keep going. How many oxygens here? It's going to be three times two. Six oxygens there. We want six oxygens here. But this is where it's more complicated because we have more oxygens to count right here, so we don't want to put a number in front of this guy yet. Let's go ahead and wait on that. Okay, let's see. How many hydrogens do we have? We've got 4 times 2, 8 hydrogens. Let's put that there. And we want 8 on the left. But again, we do have that. 8 hydrogens, so we're all set there as well. But finally, we've got 4 times if there's no number down here, it's a 1. So 4 times 1, we have 4 oxygens. We'll put that there. Finally, we want to count how many oxygens total on the right side. 6 plus 4. There's actually 10. Therefore, we want this one to be 10 oxygens right there. So that's what makes this one a bit more complicated. But to get 10, we need a coefficient of 5. So 5 times 2, 10 oxygens here. Same thing as these 6 plus these 4, and it is balanced after all. So final answer, that appears in A. 
And that's the correct balance left side for this equation here. Okay, one last type of problem. You may be asked about a limiting reactant, but they'll tell you what that is. They say a limiting reactant is the substance that runs out first, let's highlight that, and stops a chemical reaction from continuing. But you already know what a reactant is. It's something on the left side of the equation. So a limiting reactant has to be one of these two things here. In other words, it could be A or B, but it's not gonna be the last two options because this thing is a product, not a reactant. Okay, next, they're gonna tell you how many atoms. We've got five carbon atoms. Let's actually go ahead and put five Cs on the left side here. Then we've got two O2 molecules. The number in front tells us how many, then just write out O2 that many times. So two O2s there. But do you see how in the chemical equation, one carbon combines with one of these O2s? So this is gonna combine with this, and let's go ahead and do that. When we combine these, they form a carbon dioxide and we're done. But then we can start the process over. Let's combine one carbon with one more O2 and let's form another carbon dioxide. But notice we've stopped. We can't do the chemical reaction anymore because we don't have any more O2s left. We still have three carbons, but we can't combine them with anything. So the one that ran out first was the O2 molecule. Therefore, that's the limiting reactant, whichever one ran out first and we had less of. So when you're given a certain amount of reactants, whichever one you have less of, this is most likely gonna be the limiting reactant in the equation. Okay, but that's a little tricky. So here's one last practice problem like that. Once again, feel free to pause and do this one on your own here. Alrighty, we're finding the limiting reactant. So which one runs out first? But we've got two MGs, two magnesiums. Let's put that there. We've got three Cl2s. Once again, put that there. And we just combined one of these with one of these. In other words, you're combining the number of units in front. So we'll cancel one for one and let's do it. Once again, cancel one for one, but this time we end up with a Cl2. Is this the limiting reactant? Well, it's not because the thing that ran out first, that was magnesium. So that one is the limiting reactant here. And again, that shortcut, if there's two of these, three of these, the smaller number usually tells you which is the limiting one there. Here's a full-length GD science practice test for more question types. And check out my website for practice problems on all four GD subjects. Let me know what questions you have, what else you want me to cover. Good luck, you got these. We'll see you in the next video. Toodles.